Before we go any further, just want to say today's video is going to be brought to you by Fandomion. If you want to buy some really awesome anime merch from My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, and Haiku, and so many other anime, I recommend using my link in the description box to check them out. And there's free worldwide shipping on orders over $39. You'll also get an additional 5% off using my promo code down below. For any of you guys who might be interested or on the fence, I highly recommend checking out the website. Pay attention to the size chart. That'll be the biggest thing I would tell you guys. But with that being said, Seth, let's jump back into today's video. What's going on guys? So I think one thing that all of us can agree upon is the fact that the world of Naruto has dozens upon dozens of ninja clans. Just in Konoha alone, there are over 30 very powerful clans. But the thing about the Naruto world is that there are also clans outside the Land of Fire that have some pretty interesting and overpowered abilities, like for instance, the, the Ibari clan. In today's dual installment of the Ninja Clan Handbook and the Keke Genkai Handbook, we're gonna take a look at one of the deadliest clans in the land of fire which also happens to have the same honor of the uchiha clan and the uzumaki clan as being a clan that was either massacred or almost completely wiped out at some point because of their power and that clan once again is the ibari clan so for those of you guys who knew the ninja clan handbook and the keke genkai guide are two series on this channel where we explore everything in depth that you need to know about a certain naruto clan and in some cases we focus exclusively on the keke genkais so as to continue giving every character and every clan and giving them the opportunity to have equal light shined onto them because in a series that has over 700 episodes it's very easy for some clans to be tossed to the side no matter how interesting they actually are so the ibari clan will be pretty familiar to some of you guys who watch the kakashi anbu arc and the naruto shippuden anime so the clan pretty much stayed to themselves living deep on the ground deep inside the land of fire the main jutsu was that of the keke genkai which was the body oxidation jutsu which I tend to see quite a few people actually overlook when discussing some of the more savage and deadly jutsu in this series. While it isn't as flashy as the Rasen Shuriken which takes on the appearance of a massive spinning blade of chakra that has extreme destructive capability, this jutsu is more in line with what you actually expect from a ninja which is to be subtle and yet at the same time to be extremely deadly as well. Now to be blunt, this jutsu is basically like the coronavirus in my opinion which I hope YouTube does not demonetize it because I said COVID-19 but just as the coronavirus can enter your body through the mouth and through the nose and even through your eyes this jutsu is pretty much the same how person they're inside of now if you guys remember the memes of Ant-Man shrinking to crawl up Thanos's pooper super and then explode you pretty much have an idea of what the concept of this jutsu is destroying a person from the inside out. Now their, their clan leader essentially made a deal with the two devils of the Hidden Leaf Village, Orochimaru and Donzo himself. In exchange for supplying Orochimaru with various children to experiment on, Orochimaru also found a way to stabilize the clan's Keke Genkai by using his curse seals. However, much like all things Orochimaru related, the devil itself is actually inside of the details. The curse seal that Orochimaru used was only able to partially stabilize the effects of the Keke Genkai. It should be worth noting that the clan leader wasn't a pushover himself, who was now in position. Now, moving back to the actual clan itself, they most likely kept themselves locked away in the caves because of the weakness of their Keke Genkai. The clan also chose to forego the tradition of having tombstones in order to honor the dead, instead choosing to honor the actual dead by planting trees. Now, it was due to this weakness that Orochimaru eventually made them his prey, hoping to offer them hope via his curse seal set partially stabilized the Keke Genkai and gave them some semblance of having a normal life. Eventually, Orochimaru killed off the clan due to him wanting to find a way to transfer their power onto him. Because Orochimaru took the phrase, I want all the smoke, he took that literally. However, that's going to be it for this latest installment of the Ninja Clan Handbook and the Keke Genkai Handbook. How do you guys feel about the clan that Orochimaru slaughtered? And what do you think about this theme that you've seen with Naruto Clan so far, where the more powerful and the more deadly a clan's jutsu are, the more likely they are to be eliminated. Orochimaru, the Uzumaki clan were essentially ganged up on and destroyed because 
Everyone feared their sealing jutsu and the survivors had to live scattered across the ninja world. And the Uchiha clan had the ability to control the Nine Tails as well as potentially other biju. And because they plotted civil war, they were essentially wiped out. But even before the Uchiha massacre, Donzo was plotting their downfall. So what do you guys think about this common theme that you've seen here? And what do you think the actual balance needs to be? But as so always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.